in our last episode, we are joined by Onesmas Muema talking to us about community leadership. Tonight, we are joined by Bishop Chris Atemo talking to us about men. This is Building to Last program and I'm your host, Sese Dan. Welcome. Very good evening, welcome, and joining me to Building to Last program. Uh, I want first to appreciate even our Father, maybe the Prophet of the House, for this chance and opportunity. Uh, we are forever grateful, sir. Uh, just before I begin, let me start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you, dear Father, even for this chance even to talk about men, O oh Lord. How I pray that even as this word goes forth from your servant, O oh God, it shall effect change, it shall build, it shall make, O oh Lord, it shall transform in the name of Jesus Christ that we prayed. Amen. Amen. With me today is a, a, a man of God. Uh, 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 an author, a father, and uh, we are here today to talk about men. Uh, welcome so much, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> Say hi to our viewers. <laughs> it's a good evening, everybody, yes. Yes. Uh, if I may ask, who is Bishop Chris? The sage. Uh, very difficult to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I think just simply, first of all, a man, mm -hmm. um, a husband, a father, mm -hmm. a pastor, and then it keeps on spreading uh -huh. like that. I think, you know, the mandate that um, when Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit coming mm -hmm. on the people, mm -hmm. he said, you become witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, yeah. and then the Atomos. So mm -hmm. even in definition, identity begins from the inward, then it spreads outside. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So talk to me about your life story. What has made Chris? <sighs> Many things. Hmm. <laughs> Give Many me a things. few. <laughs> Many things. Um, uh, because you see, we are made by several things. There, mm -hmm. There's the aspect of nature. There's the aspect of the environments you live in. Mm -hmm. I've lived in various environments, which mm -hmm. all have shaped who I am. Mm -hmm. I've met different people. Mm -hmm. And each person that I have met, significant mm -hmm. people, they have shaped who I am. Mm -hmm. um, those that I interacted with closely, those that I've interacted with either through their writings or their books, mm -hmm. um, the activities I've been involved in, the mistakes that I have made, the successes that I have had. Mm -hmm. So um, somebody's made um, out of all the experiences yeah. that they have actually had. Yeah. yeah. Give me three. That you think this, <laughs> maybe the days that you, you, you did something and, and it really just changed your philosophy in life or changed your ideologies or changed something about it. Well, uh, there would be many, but I think the first thing that I think that um, has made me who I am is the foundation of, of knowledge. I mm. loved reading from a very young age, started uh. doing that from a young age, mm -hmm. uh, just hungry for all kinds of knowledge. Okay. I would read newspapers, I would read everything, mm. and uh, that has formed who I still am mm -hmm. up until today. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing that would shape who I am right now is uh, a certain course that I did that has, it makes me love detail. Mm. Like I don't know how to ignore uh, details that are missing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but greatly the person that shaped me the most was my mother. She mm. was a teacher and um, a disciplinarian mm. at the same time. So yeah. I think that really molded my character. Uh, when I look back, that really yeah. shaped a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Give me three things now that I discover. Three yeah. things that you'd say these things have influenced me in my life or keep influencing me in my life. God. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yeah, true. God. Uh -huh. Well, God, books, and people. And people. Yeah. All right. Um, you have a, a lesson you have learned in life. Uh, give me one, if not two. Whatever you have to do, 
do it with all your might. I think that's a basic lesson for me, mm. that whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Mm. Um, I've been talking about that a bit more of late, mm. and especially uh, during this period that we have had the pandemic, mm. um, because there are a lot of things that we think to do, mm -hmm. we feel to do, um, and then we don't do them then later on we will see other people do them. The ideas that you get in life mm. are not given just to you. Mm. They are given to a lot more than yourself. For example, when you receive a oh. business idea, yeah. you're not the only one mm. at that particular point that mm. is receiving that idea. Yeah. Uh, if you get an idea for ministry or a book you need to write, yeah. you will not be the only one. I have seen people who have written books with the same titles that I had in my mind, which I never wow. wrote. I've seen people who do things that um, were concepts that I had mm. before and I never actualized them. Mm. So when you get something to do, yeah. that might be all you're supposed to do. Wow. So you do it with all your might. Yeah. You never know about tomorrow. You yeah. cannot say, let me wait for things to get better. Yeah. Uh, you cannot say what I'm doing is too small. Yeah. It cannot be that what you're doing is insignificant. Yeah. Anything that you find yourself doing, mm. you've got to do it with all your might. All right. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, let's talk about men. Right. Yeah. There's the ideology that has gone around. In the 50s, we had the industrial man, then we had the emotional man, the wonderful man, but now the man is missing. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to man? Well, as you say, you see, there's been also evolution because of changes in the society and mm. environment mm. and so the women also had to take up different roles okay um, when the men were going out into war when the men were going out into industries to yeah. fend for their family um, a lot was also changing in the domestic uh, front yeah which meant that the women also needed to step up a bit and take yeah. up certain other roles yeah and some of those men could not fit back when they would come back, they would not fit back. It's not just something that um, happens in the homes. Mm -hmm. um, it is said that when you send out, for example, if you send out somebody to go and work in a different country, mm -hmm. then you bring them back. It is said most of them don't even stay True. because True. they don't know how to fit back in. Yeah. Fitting back in is a whole skill yeah. in itself. So most of the men then did not know how to adapt to fitting back in. Okay. And uh, some of them then just went away, met new people yeah. out there. Now today, the man is missing because of that transition. When they uh -huh. started going out mm. and not knowing how to fit in, yeah. then the next generation of men did not have models of men to teach them how to stay. Uh, if the fathers were away yeah. working, Mm. The boys were growing up being yeah. nurtured by their mothers. True. So they really don't know what it means to have a I mean, present father. Yeah. And to them then, going out of being away What's is the what they know yeah. as the norm of manhood. Yeah. yeah. What is the greatest challenge today that men are facing? Identity. Uh, men are facing the identity crisis, mm. the identity challenge. See, uh, and if you contextualize to Africa, Men mm. used to totally provide. Mm. They had these chunks of land. They would marry women to come in, help them, you know, take care of that yeah. property. Today, they don't have that. A lot of them don't uh. have that. They're mm. not inheriting it. They don't have it. So they don't have what to bring the women into. Okay. Uh, secondly, somewhere along the line, then they were going out and getting the jobs while their wives were home. Yeah. Today, the wives are also working. Some of them are earning better than the men are. Yeah. So what the man would have defined himself with yeah. as being the provider, which was the key identity that men had yeah. as being the provider and being able to take care of the woman, yeah. it seems like he has lost that. Okay. Now, he's trying to define himself. Who is he? That is why you will hear young men talk about women have become materialistic oh, yeah. because... Okay. They want to define themselves by what they provide. Yeah. And then they realize these girls can actually take care of themselves. So they don't know what to do. 
And uh, until they find their identity as men outside of what they do and what they give, yeah. they will keep on having issues and challenges. All right. Help a man. How do I identify myself? Well, uh, you see, generally, man is spirit. Okay. That's, that's, that's basic. Mm. That's mm. basic. That's bottom line. Yeah. Man is spirit. Um, if man does not draw into that, if he doesn't ex excavate the spirit yeah. person that he is, he will keep on wandering in life, trying to find out who he is. Mm. Identity comes from origin. Mm. And sometimes identity also may come from environment. Mm. But for the man, you see, our ultimate origin is God and mm. God is spirit. Mm. So until man finds God, he doesn't find himself. Uh -huh. uh, people who have grown up without, for example, fathers, they keep on looking for their fathers all their life. True. Because there's a certain emptiness that somebody will have, not knowing where they came from. Yeah. We talk about don't let where you came from define you, but the truth is <laughs> it does it's define constantly. you. Yeah. It's a foundation for you. Yeah. The tree yeah. will not grow above the soil. It must be grounded yeah. and rooted in there. So the man must understand, first of all, his spirit. Yeah. And if the man is spirit, then there must be spiritual pursuit, first of all, of the knowledge of God. Yeah. Because when he does that, then he begins to get to know himself. Uh, when Peter said to Jesus, you're the Christ, mm. Jesus said, and you are Peter, your identity is locked up in your finding of God ah. and your revelation of God. Yeah. So man is spirit. That's where every man must start. Yeah. If you have money, if you have a name, mm. if you have fame, mm. if you have every accolade, mm. but you don't deal with the aspect of the spirit, yeah. you'll still be a very empty man yeah. who will keep on buying more cars, trying to build more houses, trying to get uh. more women and all of that to fill the void that is in there. Yeah. So that, that, that's man. Um, is, are the roles of men being overrated? Is, is man under siege? Uh, we are now talking about the boy child again. I don't know whether the roles are overrated because, first of all, we've got to define what are the roles. <laughs> Let's start there. Yeah, what uh, are the roles of a man? Uh, and, and you see now that is a dynamic that is very cultural because uh, yeah. in different spaces people mm. do different things. Mm -hmm. But everything is just in the beginnings in the Bible. Yeah. It is not Eve that was given the garden. It mm. was Adam who was given the garden. Mm. Eve was given to Adam. Eve came to help Adam. Yeah. But it is Adam who was given the garden. So the role of leadership is the man's role. Mm -hmm. The role of that provision, and we can argue about it today forever, you know, because people <laughs> are trying to change the scriptures uh, to fit into societal norms. And we are trying to say, look, because this and this has happened, uh, that's not realistic. That's mm. exactly why Jesus said, when they asked him about divorce in Mark chapter 10, yeah. they said, is it lawful? Jesus said, look, what did Moses say? They said, Moses permitted it. Then Jesus said, because of the hardness of your yeah. heart. He said, but in the beginning, it was not so. So we've yeah. got to understand what is it that was in the beginning mm. and what is it that is permitted because of the hardness of people's hearts. Yeah. So what was in the beginning was that the man would take care, uh, the man would lead. Yeah. Um, he was the prophet. That's why God didn't ask Eve, what did you do? Ah. God asked Adam, where are you? Mm. You've moved from your position, mm. spiritually, physically, you've moved from your position. In fact, if he had provided for his wife, the serpent would have nothing to tempt the wife with. Because the temptation came from provision. It came from food. Food what? is provision. And that is what the serpent used. If Eve was satisfied, see, there's this water here. If I'm not thirsty, I will not take it. True. You cannot tempt me with something that I'm full of. Yeah. The only reason Eve then would want to go for the fruit, and the serpent yeah. talked about three things, and... and when she saw it, the scripture yeah. says, she saw that it was good in the sight and good for food. food. 
Yeah. If she had no appetite for that food, she would have no business with the, whatever it's fruit that thing. was. And so the provision aspect is one of the reasons why the serpent broke <laughs> into the first family. All right. L l let me ask you. You're talking about provision here. And someone is saying my wife has, is getting everything for the family. Just like you said, the aspect that the wife now is getting money. Is that the aspect you're talking about when you're talking about provision? You see, that again falls in the category of um, Moses because of the hardness of your hearts permitted. <laughs> but it was not so uh, all right. in the beginning. That's not how it was supposed to be. Okay. But there will be peculiar circumstances. Sometimes yeah. you find that the man has lost a job. Yeah. And probably the wife is in a position to take care of them. Sometimes yeah. it is a matter of uh, incapacitation. Probably the person is unwell. Yeah. They've had an accident or something, so they're not able to fend for themselves. So yeah. uh, probably the wife has to step in. Mm. Uh, then there are other times where you just find that the woman has built her own capacity better mm. and she's more competitive out there. Yeah. Sometimes even within the marriage, so she earns a bit more. Um, the worst case scenario is where the man is lazy yeah. and hoping that the wife will provide. Right. The man needs to provide regardless of how much the wife earns. Okay. And I will tell you the truth that the woman was never built to provide for the man. Mm. It's, it's, <laughs> not, it's not in the scripture. Yeah. It is not in her nature. Yeah. When, uh, you know, you rarely will hear men come out and talk about, you know, I'm a single dad raising two yeah. kids. <laughs> because he's built up to take care of people. Ah, but a woman will, will make yeah. a lot of noise about <laughs> I'm raising the child alone because it is not built up yeah. in her All right. to take care. Mm. You, when, when you see, uh, when you're not fit mm -hmm. and you run, you will feel pain. True. Because you were not built at that particular point yeah. to run or to do whatever you're mm. doing. So pain will be the message to your body that you were not built up for this okay. until you do it for a while. Mm. So the reason the woman will feel the burden and the weight is she's not built up for that. And no matter what we say, you know, mm. <laughs> we will try to say we're all equal, no matter what we say, she's yeah. not built up to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you say the man uh, should provide leadership he needs in all aspects. Uh, yes. He okay. should provide leadership. Yeah. Yes. And the Now, leadership is a... Okay, I'll, I'll say this. I said this somewhere else. So I'll, I'll just mention a few things that every yeah. woman wants to be led. Mm. No woman wants to marry a man who cannot lead. Mm. Um, even if the woman is earning so much money. True. She wants to hear a sense of direction. She okay. wants to hear this is the way we are going. She yeah. wants to hear this is what we will do. That's what we will do. Why would you come under the cover if you're actually covering the cover? <laughs> because when you come into <laughs> marriage, you come under cover. Ruth said to Boaz, allow me to come under your skirt. That is what marriage is. Mm. Uh, that means she's coming under the covering of this person. Mm. From the very beginning, the origin of a woman was undercover. She mm. came from a covered place. And mm. that is still the place that she, origin she will still go back to. Okay. We have the tendency to go back to where we came from. Ah. So she still wants to go under the cover of the man. Yeah. So if you're the one who's covering this man, yeah. then why are you under his cover? It becomes very frustrating. And that mm. is where certain uh, marriages then True. begin to have yeah, friction. Yeah, yeah. Because the woman is thinking, you're the man. Yeah. Do something. Say something. Sometimes you don't even have what to do, but yeah. you must have what to say. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you must have what to say. You, you must... Your presence in that place must bring a sense of security mm. and uh, it must bring a sense of safety. Mm. So every woman wants to be led. Yeah. Number two, every woman wants to be loved. Okay. She wants to be loved. Yeah. And when a woman is talking about her being loved, the treatment she's got to receive. See, a man cannot love without giving. Mm. He cannot love without giving. And a woman cannot be loved without being given. Mm. It cannot work. Mm. She is supposed to, in, in receiving love, we receive also the things that will show mm. that love. Mm. Now, if the man does not have um, proper self-esteem, 
How mm. does he love? If he's not comfortable in his skin and confident in himself, how does he love? Okay. You cannot give what you don't have. Yeah. So he has to be in a certain position in life, in a certain state in life, for him to be able to actually love correctly. Yeah. Because in loving, you're filling somebody else's cup and glass. Now, if you have less than what their glass is, that measure will not be good. Yeah. So every woman wants to be loved. Mm. Uh, every woman wants to be listened to. She wants to be listened to. Now, it looks like a very simple thing, but let me tell you, it takes strength to be a listener. I saw that in your book. Yeah, it takes that, strength yeah. to be a listener. Yeah. Um, it takes strength to be a listener. Just And listening goes beyond what the person is saying. Yeah. It is you picking up what they're not saying, See. watching their moves, seeing their eyes, seeing their behavior, seeing their disposition, and being able to tell this person is crying for help. This person is not okay. This person is wounded somewhere. Yeah. It takes a lot of skill to listen. Now, that also means that you actually have to really pay attention. Ah, you cannot yeah. listen if you're I not paying attention. attention. So, there are certain basics about a man and uh, that every woman would love. I, I say that every woman wants to be lavished. She wants, she wants gifts. She wants simple things. It may be an earring. It may be a chocolate here. It may be um, a card there. But there's no woman who doesn't want to be lavished. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there's no woman who doesn't want to be lavished. Yeah. And even those who normally say, you know, I'm not a gifts person, <laughs> most probably they have not met gifts. <laughs> when they begin to read the they gifts. They will know they've been missing something. <laughs> yes. Ah. And they begin to get into it. Sometimes it is how somebody protects themselves from expecting something they're not sure they will yeah, receive. Yeah, true. So instead of me ah. expecting something and being disappointed, I will act like, no, I don't want it. Yeah. But then when I receive it, I realize, well, it's such a good thing. Yeah. This is the power of exposure. Ah. That's how when you expose somebody to something yeah. that they've not had, they realize they don't want to go back into who they used to be because something in them has yeah. been drawn into the new thing that they're exposed to. Yeah. I once did uh, something to somebody and took them into a place, yeah. uh, gave them a treat, and I said, I'm not even sure you will go back to the normal <laughs> life that you had. And he thought, well, it's not anything much. Mm. But then what had been created was an appetite. And it did not take long before Bef they started moving away from what they used to have. Yeah. Because now they'd been exposed mm. to something else. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, uh, is there a misconception for women that will be listening that we've got about men that maybe stops it, does not allow the man to be the man? Uh, there are a lot of misconceptions. And... Uh, one of, one of the misconceptions that uh, women have about men is that men don't have feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a very deep... But the staunch thing, yeah. They, they, they really <laughs> don't think that men have feelings. <laughs> so they feel that it is easy for men to walk away. It is easy for men to just get off. Men do have feelings. And uh, mm. when those feelings are not directed correctly, they produce a very different uh, species of men. Oh. And probably the abusers that you will see are men who never ah. handled their pain. Mm -hmm. They are men who never handled their trauma. Okay. They never dealt with their losses. Yeah. They did not know how to handle certain things around their life. Yeah. And people said, just move on. You know? mm. And when they moved on, yeah. they moved on to break the next person and to ah. hurt the next person. So okay. it's a misconception that men don't have uh, don't have feelings. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Then there's the misconception that all that men want is uh, intimacy with a woman. Yeah. Uh, that's not How true. About that? <laughs> that's not true. The, it's it to be number one. Uh, it's, uh. it's not. Okay. It's not. Um, it's not. I mean, even for a man to be intimate with a woman, there has got to be a sense of connection. Of course, the anatomy of a man is very different yeah. from a woman. So yeah. f it is easier for the man to get intimate than it is for a woman. Mm. But still, 
It's not everywhere. What is not. the greatest need of a man? The greatest need of a man. I, I'll tell you, a man was created because the man was created in the image of God. Yeah. Uh, uh, because he was created in the yeah. image of God, a man sits on the throne just like God. The first thing man ever had was dominion. Yeah. That's the first yeah. thing. If you ever want to understand the basics of humanity, you just go back to the basics of the scripture. The first thing he had was dominion. Okay. It wasn't a woman. It wasn't intimacy. Now, this is why a man can leave a woman in order to get a business deal. A woman can leave a job in order to get a man. It's very different. Because the first interaction for the woman was a relationship. The first mm. interaction for a man was ah. dominion. So he will seek yeah. power mm. by all means. Okay. Where he doesn't feel powerful, he will walk away. All right. So even if the woman, for example, says, um, I'll take care of us. I will work okay, hard. Yeah. I've got a seven-figure salary and all of this. But she disrespects the man, he will walk away. All right. He will walk away. Yeah. Mm. yeah. All right. Uh, I want to talk a bit on fatherhood. Yeah. Uh, there is, there is this uh, the majority of the, of the, of the young people not finding fathers present in the home, and the highest percentage are uh, being brought up by single parents and, if I may say, single mothers. There is a disconnect. Uh, how? What would you say about that? I am lately refusing the term single parents. <laughs> Uh, because children don't just appear. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have to both parents. It's just yeah. that one person either is not taking responsibility mm -hmm. okay. or they True. are not being allowed to take, take responsibility. responsibility. So then the question is, mm. is it that the man left or is it that the man was pushed away? Because some of the people who are raising these children, yeah. some of the mothers who are raising the children by themselves, have also locked out yeah, the fathers. Yeah. There are others who have fathers who ran away. Yeah. But whichever the case, you know, mm. uh, you will never have everything in life. Okay. But you can always have, you can always learn. Mm. There are a lot of models. Mm. There are people out there that you can look up to. Okay. Um, their teachers, their mentors, their mm. coaches, their uh, pastors, yeah. their counselors, their yeah. people just surrounding us all. Yeah. Um, their people who have gone ahead of us yeah. in one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, their colleagues at work yeah. who are older. So there's always going to be a father figure ah. somewhere. Mm. So for the one who grows up without a father, you can always reach out to and get hold of a father figure. But, w of course, you see, when the child does not have a father, whether it is a daughter or a son, mm. not just men, they can easily struggle with certain things like, who am I? Mm. And whose am I? Mm. Uh, biblically, the role of naming the child, and it's not just giving a Christian name, to name the child was to give an identity. Ah. And to speak a prophecy over them. Mm. That role was the father's role. Mm. It was the father to declare who this child was and who they were going to become. Yeah. So in the absence of fatherhood, then you lack that aspect of somebody who gives identity yeah. and gives assignment yeah. to this child. The father is supposed to affirm the child. Mm. Um, and it's still the father who is supposed to define this child mm. and tell them what they can do and what they cannot do but when the father is absent mm -hmm. the young men mostly learn manhood from their peers ah. because they don't know how to approach the older men as well so yeah. they learn their manhood from their peers yeah. until they begin losing their way getting yeah. messed up that's when society begins to pay attention either when the person has yeah. gotten into drugs Oh, they're into alcohol, they've lost mm. their way, mm -hmm. they cannot keep a job. That's yeah. when people begin to pay attention. Most generally, people pay attention to men when they're getting past their teens. Yeah. But for the girls, they pay attention from an early age. True. Uh, 
But there is still help because men can always find father figures. All right. Yeah. Uh, there, there is the concept. Um, there's so much information in the society, and especially through media. And there is this father who is trying to, you know, to, to put to instill something in their in their children. They're still to 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 become the father. They want to put identity on them. But they also the outside world is doing something about it. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to balance. And then there is the thing for children rights. Talk to me about that. How can you help this dad do what he's supposed to do? You see fatherhood is a lifetime job. Ah, take your time, you're saying yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Fatherhood is a lifetime job. So it's not going to be um, me speaking to my son today and then he's supposed to be all right. Okay. Even when my son gets to 40, mm. I will still remain his father. Ah. Even when he gets to 50, I'll still remain his father. Mm. There's always something for the son to learn from the father. Okay. And I think this is the wisdom of God that there's going to be all these voices, but yeah. then he placed us in families. Yeah. And he put the father as the leader over there. Mm. That is ideally, yeah. the father is the leader. In yeah. some cases, the fathers are not there. Mm. So they have mothers. But people get to know the impact of what their parents said when they grow up and go out into the world. That's when they'll realize they actually listen to what was said to them when they were three years, five years, seven, 10, 15, 20. They begin to see that in perspective. So what that means is that as a parent, you can never stop playing your role yeah. just because society is working against what you're doing. Okay. You have to keep on building these people and nurturing them and reminding them what the, the wrong is and what the right thing is. You've got mm -hmm. to keep on telling them what truth is. You've got to keep on steering them back. You see, you need the pilot the most when there's a turbulence. Ah. You need the captain the most when the ship is getting into a storm. Parents are yeah. needed the most ah. when the children are facing so much out there. You cannot say, because the winds are blowing so hard in the sea, I'm going to stop steering the ship. Mm. In fact, it is said that it is the storms that produce great captains. Mm. Your greatest test of fatherhood is how you navigate through the different seasons and the different challenges that your children will face. Mm. So there's what the net will say to them. Yeah. There's what people will say to them. Yeah. But what are you saying to them? You can't keep quiet. Yeah. You have, eventually, you're their father. Now, yeah. you know, God judged Samuel for fatherhood. True. And God blessed Abraham for fatherhood. fatherhood. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Give me two things that men should take home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well... I'm trying to see which two things they should take home today. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, man, yeah. you know, uh, in Second Second Kings chapter two, no, First Kings, First Kings chapter two, and verse two, David said something uh, to Solomon. He says, "I'm going away in the way of the fathers," mm. and he said, "Be a man." Manhood is not what we do; it is who we are. Okay. It is not what we do. What we do is important, but it must rest on who we are. Okay. If you don't settle on who you are, everything else you do will not make sense. Yeah. So when we say be a man, mm. certain things that we want you to be, first of all, you need to be present. Present. Be present in the life of the people who are around you. And that is not just physically present. It means be involved. Mm. Be involved. Because you are the God of these people. Mm. When, when God came down in Genesis 3, when there was the breach in the garden, he said, Adam, where are you? Because that is supposed to be the gate man. That's supposed to be the gatekeeper. Mm. So when you're absent, either spiritually, emotionally, mentally, or physically, mm. you open the gates for your family or your generation to be attacked. Okay. So there is that aspect of be a man. Mm. And if I may say something to the fathers, sometimes you don't have what to give. Okay. 
but you have what to teach. You may not have what to give, but you always have something to teach. Mm. Teach it. All right. Yeah. Parting shot, sir, <laughs> as we come to the end of our part one. <laughs> well, generally, we need to uh, invest more in the man than we have done before. Um, but every man needs to know that they're in a battle and they're in a warfare, which stems back, I've said this in one of my books, it stems back to, very, to the very uh, original setup, which is because man was given dominion and Satan didn't have any territory. God had heaven, man had the earth, the devil had nowhere, so he was coming after the man. And every man must remember that they represent dominion. They represent territories, each and every one of them. Mm. So every man then must learn how to and be a king. They must develop the demeanor of wow. a king. That yeah. means don't carry yourself just anyhow. Don't just do anything. Mm. Don't just go anywhere. Don't just say anything because you carry a dominion mandate of kingship. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much, sir. You're uh, as we come to the end of our program, uh, that has been with us, uh, Pastor Chris, and I'll just request him to make a prayer before we end. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone who's watching and listening tonight that the grace that makes obedience to the word easy will be released upon them. Let everyone find the expression of this word in ways that will be a blessing to them and their families in the name of Jesus Christ. So let every thought that does not align to you be uprooted. Bring Amen. healing to every man's heart and soul. Yes, Lord. And even the people who are around them, their families, children and wives, parents to them, I pray bring healing to them. Amen. I pray that you restore uh, the image of the man to himself in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, bring back authority, mm. vision, purpose, mm in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be courage for every man who's listening to me. Mm. And I ask right now that in the name of Jesus, you will open doors for men who have the desire to mm. become the full men that they ought to be. Mm. Open doors for them to become better, to become greater, mm. to become the men that their families can look up to. In mm. Jesus' name, amen. amen.